Hey y'all. So today I want to talk to you about my concept of grip and what's going on when drumstick meets drum pad. I'm going to start with what I would tell a beginning student who has no idea of what's going on and wants to hold a drumstick like this, right? And we're going to take that all the way up through some of the really complicated things I think are going on and the things that I think are important. So first of all, when someone comes in, doesn't know how to hold the drumsticks at all, the very first thing I tell them is, I ask them if they know what a fulcrum is and if they know what a seesaw is, right? And pretty much everyone knows what a seesaw is. And I explain that we're going to start with the thumb and first finger. Again, this is how I start. This, this to me is sort of basic position 101. This is not end point. But I've tried other ways of explaining it to beginning students, and it seems like this is the place that works the best for where I want them to get in the long term. Then have them wrap their fingers around the stick and tell them that the motion is mainly with the wrist and that their fingers should be pulling the stick into the, into the hand. Okay. I grew up marching in drum corps and I tend to have a position that starts with a low at rest position, but I also teach this kind of thing too for what I call a full stroke. Right. I use a lot of terms that make sense to me that I've heard other people use, but frankly, there's a lot of conflicting usage of terms. So anytime I use a term, I try to explain exactly what I mean, because when you say to someone a full stroke or a down stroke or a tap or a whip motion, that really seems like it means different things to different people. There is no specific codified version of what drumming terms mean 100% of the time yet. The Percussive Art Society is doing great work, Drum Magazine especially, and Modern Drummer are doing great work, and it seems like we're on our way, but we're not there yet. Okay, so anytime I use a term, I'll try and visually show someone what I mean. So anyway, that's the very first, we can call that sort of position one, right? You're kind of holding onto the stick mostly, it's the wrist, with the fingers and the center of the fulcrum is up here. Okay. My one rule that I have with students is that I tell them I want their thumb to look like it's sort of pointing in the direction of the drumstick. Okay. And then thumbs on the side. This is a pretty German approach, but this seems like the nice, again, this is starting point. This is grip level one for me. Another example I use for students is to think of hand drummers, right? So when we hold drumsticks, we're one step removed from the drum, but our motion should be similar, I believe. So if that's what a hand drummer is doing, okay, I'm gonna put my drumstick in and I'm gonna make a really similar motion. Whether I'm using that wrist up position first or wrist more down position, it still should be fluid, right? It can be either this or this, okay? The important thing to me isn't exactly whether my wrist is breaking first or, right, smaller. The important thing is the position for me, okay? so. When students have a nice facility with the full stroke, that's when I start to, I'll, I'll teach them very briefly about the tap stroke. The thing about teaching the tap stroke for me is I'm not going to, I'm not going to teach it as too separate of a thing to a beginning student, right? Because it's, 
basically the same thing as the full stroke, just a small version. Because what sets a full stroke apart for me is that it's a full motion all the way down and all the way back up, right? And a tap stroke, it's the same thing. It starts and ends in the same spot, just a miniaturized version thereof, right? So if I start with a full stroke, and I gradually get quieter, at every point down along the way, you could argue that that is a similar motion in terms of starting and stopping in the same place. And that's to me what's special about the full stroke and the tap stroke and why they're basically the same thing. But what about downstrokes, upstrokes, when you wanna change volume? Well, I tend to teach, again, this is one of the things I teach students within the first month this is this is it's really important to me if not the second week if they get the full stroke right away we're on to to accents and and quiet notes and i use a very drum corps exercise for this which is just down up down up down up and i'll see how they're reacting to this to depend on whether i get too far into what's going on with their wrist right at this point, I definitely do tend to teach them that wrist up, wrist down thing, the whipping motion. It's kind of molar. Um, I try not to throw too many, oh, this is molar technique, this is open close technique, this is that technique, especially at beginner students, right? I'll just have them make positions and, and worry about what it's called later. So. The way I break that in half is the downstroke, right? So we're gonna start with the stick up, right? And if we're thinking that, that the stick is like a basketball, right? And, and we're bouncing, right? Well, the downstroke is what happens when a basketball doesn't have enough air. Right? I'm not pinching, I'm not squeezing too much. I'm, I'm a big fan of grip being as relaxed as possible. I sort of absorb the rebound with my hand. And then the upstroke, right? It's just, I drop the stick and pick it up. Sort of like I'm touching a hot stove. Oh, that's hot. Okay, so then when I put those together, I have down, up, 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 down, up. Okay, again, it, it depends on how the student is responding, whether I get too involved with that, what I call broken wrist, right? So, so you break that straight line of your forearm. You look, you look like a, a puppet, right? Like a marionette. Um, and so if the student is, you know, guns a-blazing and they're getting the, the other way right, of course, to do that without the broken wrist is just It's a little bit more articulated. It's a little bit more staccato and aggressive. Neither one of those is exactly wrong. They're different approaches to the same problem. Okay, so, so those are the basic grips that I, that I sort of talk about with students in the first probably several months of instruction. I do wanna talk briefly about what I think is going on from like an advanced perspective. So, there's the open close thing that we use that I use for double stroke rolls. Right? Okay, there's that. There's the molar motion.
which really features that broken wrist thing. But then probably more interesting is the fact that the fulcrum is actually changing across my whole hand. There are times where I'll hold on just with the back fingers. I didn't use this too much, but this is a really nice big kind of if I want something that I don't need much fine control over, but I'm going to play loud and I just want the sticks to be like crazy, then I can hold on way back there. Probably most of the time I'm actually making the fulcrum on my second finger nowadays. Really what I tell people is it's sort of between, right? It's between the first and second finger. So if I, if I let it totally be there, I find I lack a little bit of control and I like to have a little bit more control from my first finger on the stick. Right. And the other thing that I think is the most important is that my grip varies depending on what I'm playing. This is one of those things that I think every time I watch a video or someone explaining grip, they seem to be talking about one scenario, right? They don't talk about, well, for double strokes, I'm going to use this grip. And then for singles, I'm going to open up my hands a lot and play this. Right? Now my fingers are way, way loose. Which means that while I'm playing, I'm changing that a lot. Also, rolling my hands a little bit, right? The extremes of those, of course, are what we're taught as German grip and French grip, okay? But I think that's an oversimplification, and I've noticed that hands tend to change a lot. So that's sort of a starter of what I think is going on with grip. The last thing I want to mention, and this is back to that fulcrum thing that I start with with my beginning students, is if we really think about how many fulcrums there are involved with drumsticks. So the drumstick is our lever. And I have a fulcrum, we can argue about where it is in your fingers, but there's a fulcrum in your fingers, okay, in the center of your hand, which actually seems like it moves. Your wrist is a fulcrum, your elbow is a fulcrum, and your shoulder is a fulcrum, right? So you've got this terribly complicated system involved in hitting something with a stick, okay? And as you go up the chain, the fulcrums are a little bit less involved. My shoulder certainly isn't doing very much other than acting like a shock absorber. But it acts a whole lot when I'm moving around the drum set. So Okay, so this I hope has been a nice little sort of sampler of how I think about technique. I will do a more in-depth advanced grip video in the future. I wanted to just touch on that briefly. Mostly this is a video for, for my students who after their first lesson go, wait, what did she say? So, <laughs> so this, is for, this is for my students to check out that first beginning position, right? Bounce the stick like a drumstick, or like a basketball. Yes, bounce it like a drumstick. Maybe I'll start saying that. Basketballs bounce like drumsticks. And try and stay really re relaxed and loose. To quote Louis Belson, the faster you want to play, the more relaxed you have to be. Okay, so. So thanks for watching, and like I say, I'll do a more advanced video on technique in the future, and, and I will see you again real soon. All right, thanks.
Bye.